okay now we're going to look at truth and proof so people have been worrying about what is true and what is false but nobody really knew what 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 does it mean to say something is true and what does the proof mean usually mathematicians know when they see a proof they know it's true it's a proof or not is it hand waving or is it really a proof and even if it's hand waving people can actually quickly fill in the details and understand it's a proof but it wasn't clear what's the written proof so until a Tarski in Berkeley came up with a definition of written proof so let's look at that so let's look at a dialogue what is truth truth is something that is universally true in all interpretations that means what is true doesn't matter where you apply it it, it should apply in the same way that's what Chetan is saying Biju what is proof proof is evidence of for the truth so and David says truth is independent of the speaker the listener and the situation it doesn't depend on who says it when he says it or she says it or what the situation is it's independent anyone can check the proof and verify it's correct or not you can't say you have to trust me on it that's the first uh, red flag if somebody says trust me that's not a proof and the reference is by Alfred Tarski he wrote an influential pa paper in 1940s called truth and proof so the, the major problem we have with truth and proof in like 1600 centuries uh, century a uh, lot of people is to prove there is God and a lot of people is to prove there is no God and they used to come with all kinds of proofs but a major problem they had was before we can say anything you must be able to define every word in a sentence you can't talk about God without actually defining what is God and if you don't understand the words you don't understand the sentence if you don't understand the sentence you cannot even proceed with logic and you're outside the logical arena you are into some other arena and then we'll not even bother about those people to arguing like that without no understanding what a word means so let's look at uh, some examples the most common example given is induction proof by induction so let's say Anu says all crows are black and you see a crow okay so then says how can you be sure I've seen a million crows and if you see million crows and all are black does it mean the crows black all crows are black so the question revolves around all and this is all means it's independent of the, the amount of crows you've seen in the past present and in every single world okay so Anu modifies it mean I'm 99% sure all crows are black so the crow you you saw was black there may be other possibilities so this is a probable proof it's probably true unless we find a white crow so is there a white crow and does it disprove that proof that all crows are black let's look further so what is circular reasoning Chetan would you call Maina a brown crow Anu but all crows are black Chetan says you can't define crows as black bird and prove crows are black because you can't use the definition itself to prove something because you're trying to prove it and you can't use the result of the proof to back to prove in a circular definition would you call a brown crow a hawk a crow obviously not but then Anu is saying that all crows are black isn't that the definition so let's look at a circular definition so what is a crow crow is a black bird that eats garbage so by definition all crows are black okay so we are seeing the kind of problems people get into when not knowing the difference so before you start proving something you must define every single word and every single thing what is a crow and you must exactly know what a crow is before you can actually try to prove something or what is black even that needs definition so what is the procedure to prove something the standard definition is first you define everything you must define it in clear simple terms that are independent of the speaker even if you show it to another person from another continent they should be say okay that's a crow or not a crow and then you form a hypothesis then then you prove the hypothesis and make a theory and then you use your theory to make predictions and if a new data invalidates your theory you must revise your theory that's the general uh, way in which knowledge proceeds you have a theory which basically explains things that are seen around you it also explains new things which you haven't seen before and something doesn't fit in then you have to revise your theory or get rid of the theory 
like the earth is flat is a wrong theory because when you fly up you can actually see the earth is round and this is the circle of knowledge you make a hypothesis by from induction then you do some deduction make some predictions on the future and then you make observations and observations you test your predictions on your theory is it true or not and the most common example given is from geometry in Euclidean geometry like 2000 years back people thought the earth was flat and earth was the center of the universe and then came along Galileo he looked with his telescope he built a telescope and he saw Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter they moved every day and he made a picture of it eventually he figured out that the earth is not the center and the, we all revolve all the planets are around the sun so then the, the, the geometry had to be revised then we started with Euclidean geometry which was from the time of Euclid 2000 years back then came along uh, hyperbolic geometry in which space is not flat but it's curved and then for 2000 years it didn't matter but when we had relative theory of relativity and atomic energy and stuff uh, we had to revise our theory of Euclidean geometry and we had hyperbolic geometry and theory of relativity which is a refinement of uh, standard relativity theory so and then let's look at the counter example back to the crow logic this is an Indian crow which is black or American raven and there's a pied African crow all the crows in Africa actually have a white jacket and this is a counter example to the statement all crows are black so a single counter example can invalidate a proof and they also have something called albino crow which is uh, basically a crow which doesn't have a color gene so it becomes white so the thing is so is the theorem false that all crows are black no we can just add a condition all crows are black in this country and then if you're not sure you can say i believe almost all, all i believe that means the students believe it is not even true it's not even true that he's not saying that whether it's true or false and almost all that means uh, almost all means and it's not really qualified but it's a commonly used term in math that means almost you'll not encounter any other crow in your life are black in this country so now it is just a belief and it's not a statement of logic then you don't have to prove it okay so this is about uh, certain uh, proof we'll look more into uh, uh, logic later on